and welcome to Tales from the Pit, the behind the lens access to the entertainment world and the creative people involved. Today is our part two with guitar tech extraordinaire Tom Reardon. We hope you enjoy the show. Um, yeah, I mean, so let's talk about, so um, you mentioned uh, uh, in this moment, which you and I just, you know, yeah. we're hanging out a couple weeks ago. It sure uh, were. How, how did that come about? How do you get involved within this moment? So, I mean, as we know, um, Brian, dear friend of mine, you know, also Pop Evil alumni. Um, <laughs> so, Brian had called me and said that, uh, you know, they, and it was for some reason, however the plans align, um, for a while now, some, Brian has always called me about, you know, stuff that's been going on within this moment, um, you know. One time it was, oh, hey, we may need a truck driver. I know you, I know you, can, you can drive a truck. Are you <laughs> yeah. available? Stuff like that. So it was always, you know, uh, which I always appreciate, you know, touring family always looking out and saying, hey, man, I, know you, I don't know if you're available or not, but if you're home, I know it's not what you normally do, but you want to go out and do something different. Okay, cool. So somehow, some way, he would always call me with stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, so throughout the course of time, um, you know, one, one of my dear friends was their guitar technician for a long time. Um, and, uh, so both of them had actually called me around the same time asking if I wanted to come in and take over. Um, I don't know the whole ins and the outs of it, you know, but, uh, both of them were like, Hey, you know, you know, my buddy was like, Hey, you know, would you be interested in taking over for me? And I was like, but well, you're their guitar technician, you know, like what? And he was like, no, nah, you know, I mean, I, I think you let me know. And then Brian called and was like, hey, so would you want to do that? And I was like, you know what? I mean, you guys are all friends of mine. So let's, you know, whatever. Let's give it a go. Let's, let's see what happens. Um, and again, it so had happened to be I was supposed to be out with them on the Slipknot, not Fest tour you know, with Ginger. Yep. So we, we all kind of had this connection and we we're all oh man you know this is the first tour we all would have been able to do together as friends and well then that didn't happen so it was a bunch of bummed out moments and then all of a sudden this phone call came in and it was hey we got this run coming up in may you want why don't you come hang out and i was like okay i guess i can come hang out so and then sure enough you know i flew out and i mean it was uh i mean just a instant moment of every, everything kind of clicked into place. Um, you know, these, uh, those guys are just, uh, I mean, I, how can I describe it? Uh, I mean, if you, if you've talked to yourself in a mirror ever, you know, that was kind of our first impressions with each other. <laughs> um, so, you know, me, me and those guys, you know, we have a, a lot in common, um, a lot of same fundamentals and, uh, you know, uh, myself and myself, Randy and Chris, our favorite bands are Kiss. So, mm. you know, sound checking Randy's guitar every day involved, you know, playing, you know, either a Motley Crue song or a Kiss song. And, uh, yep. <laughs> you know, so it, it was kind of, you know, I guess you say the puzzle pieces all kind of fell into place. And, uh, I mean, those guys have just got something real special going on with them. And, uh, I mean, probably just some of the nicest people on the planet, um, you know, every one of them, I mean, just that entire band and crew are just, you know, every person that's there is there for a reason. Yeah. Um, I mean, they all have such big hearts and it's not a, uh, you know, I, again, you know, I, I love my job and um, I've always, you know, I hold myself to certain standards as far as being professional and everything else. And, you know, uh, you know, being well-mannered and whatnot. And you always kind of go, well, this is all times, you know, whether, you know, it's roadie Friday or not, you know, there's no letting your hair down or whatever. And these guys made it so that it was, you know, you always felt very comfortable in your skin. Yeah. Um, you know, it's no sense. Everyone knows I'm sober. I don't, I don't drink or do anything like that. So um, having like-minded people that are in the same boat, you know, that, uh, you know, will have coffee with you at one o'clock in the morning. You know, after you've loaded a trailer, it's pretty neat. Um, so, you know, that was uh, a, definitely a first for me. Um, you know, tours I've been on, it was always, uh, oh, well, you know, Tom doesn't drink, you know, let's get him Red Bulls or whatever. 
you know, that's okay. You know, he, he goes to bed early anyway, so, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> so, um, but I mean, you know, these guys made it, you know, very comfortable for me in that situation. And I mean, going into the gig, they knew I, you know, I was sober. So being able to let right out of the rip, I mean, it was these guys. So how long have you been sober for? You know, well, you know, I'm going on three years. I'm like, cool, man. You know, I'm like five to 11 years sober. It's like, wait, what? You yeah, know, nice. and it's like, well, no kidding. All right. Well, fucking awesome. You know? So, I mean, they, they was definitely welcoming with big arms. Um, you know, things that uh, I'm go ahead. You know, kept going. Yep. I think there's stuff like that that I'm, uh, you know, not that I'm saying I'm not used to that, but it was just so out of the gate. You know, it was kind of one of those, you know, they're like, so you were born and now you're here. What happened in between? You know, it was more than just a, uh, you know, let's, uh, let's just be your, our guitar technician. Let's figure out who you are and let's be, let's be, let's be friends. You know, let's hang out. So, which is really neat, you know, especially to have that kind of relationship you know, as a technician to your artist is kind of, uh, you know, on that level is definitely a necessity. Um, you know, the, uh, like when I worked for pop evil, you know, Dave and I, uh, you know, that, that's a, that's a man who I look at, that's my older brother. Um, so you need to have kind of those relationships and, you know, that was a relationship I had built over many years of working with Dave. I mean, ITM, these guys were, well, we already kind of know you. So let's, let's know you a little bit better. Let's hang out, you know, and, so, I mean, it was just a great, it was a really well fit. And I'm glad that I uh, had the opportunity to be part of their crew. So. Yeah, they, they have such a major production too. And I was talking with Brian about the whole design and all that stuff that's involved. And Maria's got such a vision and she's got such an artistic, you know, uh, sense about her, about everything. Mm. And everyone involved is just so creative and so, you know, like I said, the best, some of the best of the best in the business yeah. and stuff like that. Now, when, when it comes to teching, you you were guitar teching for them. Were you, are you teching for both guitar players or just one? I, so I am teching for Randy, Chris, and Travis. Oh, oh uh, in the bass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I am doing Damn. that. We, we had, a, um, uh, we had a, a couple of incidents on that tour, which I'm sure Brian talked to you about. Um, so, we had one of our key crew members uh, get sick. And um, I mean, Jessica, our stage manager, she's a badass. Um, and Brian and I had to kind of step out of what our normal assigned roles were. And, uh, you know, I had to take over for a few, about a week of her being the stage manager. Um, <laughs> so going from just being a guitar tech for that band to having to oversee that show with Brian was, uh, it, it was a good time. Um, you know, but it was, uh, just as you said, I mean, it goes to show, you know, watching, going just from being the guy who keeping the guitars and the rigs and everything else in place to watching everything else happen and making sure things happened right. And again, Brian and I had to do this at the biggest show the band's done in their career in front of, I think it was 80,000 people at Rockville with pyrotechnics that they've never done before without our stage manager. Um, so, you know. I mean, it just goes to show the elite status of that crew and everybody on that crew, how hard they work. Um, you know, and these are people that, you know, every day wake up early and go out and do their job. And, you know, they aren't just the okayest at their job. You know, these people are the best at their job. Um, and I've gotten to witness that firsthand. Um, I mean, th those people just watching them do what they do. I mean, uh, you know, the state, the set carpenters, um, the, the light, the, the LDs and everything else. Everyone's role is so critical into making that show happen. Um, I mean, and honestly, I mean, not, you know, watching these guys go, I'm like, man, you know, you don't think of it in certain aspects of going, what, how, how important is that role until you watch it happen? And you go, wow, without that one person, that one person wasn't here this whole show would be over, you know, right. and uh, watching how people can rise up, you know, during a time like that and come together and make this million dollar, multi-million dollar production happen, you know, with people down. I mean, it just goes to show the, the pride that these people have in that show and that production and, uh, you know, how everything is so tight knit together. I mean, that's, that band is, that band and that crew is a family. Yep. Um, and it's, uh, 
you know, what it's like going out with your best friend and you know, all that person's corks and what they do and when they're going to, when they're going to do this or do that, you know, in real life. And then you work with that person, you go, all right, well, I know you're afraid of heights. So I'm going to get on your shoulders. <laughs> you know what I mean? If, if so it's yeah. kind of, but I mean, you know, and, and Brian is very good at, you know, uh, you know, read, reading the room, if you would. So Brian knows how to rally a crew and, and make things right. Um, and kind of, you know, you know let, let you take the reins a little bit and go, okay, let's figure this out. Yeah. But let's let you try to figure it out and let's see what you come up with because, yep. you know, you need to learn that. And, you know, Brian may not know the answer to something, but, you know, and if he does, he's going to, you know, he wants you to, he wants you to figure it out too. You know, that's how you grow as a crew guy. Right. Um, so just watching him work and us bouncing ideas off of each other, how to make things happen and organizing that kind of chaos and whatnot and overcoming that adversity of having such a critical crew member be out. Um, you know, I hope hopefully she's not watching and I don't want to, you know, boost her up or anything, but <laughs> no, she's a bad, our, our stage manager, just is a badass. So, um, you know, without her, we would be pretty screwed. So, yeah. But, and, and the show, I mean, we were all together at the show, the last show of the tour in Portland, Maine, yep. uh, a few weeks ago. And, you know, as I was talking with you guys and, and Brian was just like, you know, people at you know, people drop off and then everyone's going to fill in and all that stuff. You gotta, <laughs> yeah. I think you guys had to have a new lighting person or something. I forget who all the different people were. Oh yeah. But yeah. I think at the end of the night, it was like after the last song, I mean, the show was perfect. Show went off, everything sounded yeah. and was an amazing show. Great performance. And at the end of the night, I could just see everyone going, thank God. It's <laughs> <over."> <laughs> we did yeah, it. I mean, we did it. We did it. You know, it was, uh, I mean, it just so, you know, goes to show you, um, you know, people who had never maybe came to a show or had seen the show a million times, you know, they never would have known that those shows were done without key people uh, involved as far as making the actual production happen. Um, I mean, like I said, I mean, a lot of that's owed to how badass those crew members are and, uh, you know, why they are where they are. Um, I mean, like yeah. I said, I mean, I got, I got to live on a bus with these people and work next to them every day. I mean, by far, they are upright, you know, most professional and know what they're doing. Um, and, you know, or can be prove a point, plug and play. Yep. You know, so there, there are guys that were, like I said, I mean, I've never stage managed on that level with that kind of a production. And, you know, here, here's Brian and I, you know, playing with pyrotechnics in front of, you know, a hundred thousand people or whatever. And, you know, that's kind of, that's pretty cool, you know, and we're sitting there going, man, well, where's our stage manager is here to do this. That's really her job. And right. well, hopefully we're doing this right. <laughs> you know, and, <laughs> but, uh, you know, it was great to be able to watch how a crew can rally up like that and really support one another. And, uh, you know, and it's okay to, you know, get in the bus and have a freak out to yourself and go, Oh man, I hope, you know, what am I doing? And have people around you that, you know, wholeheartedly support you and, you know, have your back. Um, so it was really cool to watch that happen with that kind of a crew. Um, especially like I said, you know, I mean, you know, you know, like you said, LDs, uh, stage managers and everything else are like, well, okay, let's kind of pull a rabbit out of a hat today and let's make this happen. So, I mean, like I said, we we're very fortunate that, you know, that crew is, badass like that you know that yeah, people are cro cross trained to do a bunch of different stuff so and like i said the show was flawless if if i had not had you know had discussions with you guys there would have been no knowledge of anything <laughs> wrong whatsoever it and was the same the and, show that and, we would expect you know yeah and, and that's and that's why i mean i'll be honest with you that's why i love my job um you know it's the people like that that would come out to the show and you know i mean you know, it's, I, I know I'm being a guy who's gone to concerts, you know, and paid 45 to $200 a ticket to see my favorite band and something goes wrong. And I'm like, well, hell, you know, I mean, like when, uh, I got to see Van Halen play with Gary Sharon and Gary Sharon couldn't sing, you know, oh I paid yeah. a lot of, I paid a lot of money to see that show, you know, yep. it was a great, great woods and man and Mansfield. And, uh, you know, they couldn't do the show. They, you know, he, he got laryngitis. So it's like, well, what do you do? It happens. You know, yep, so it's it like, 
you know, but at the same time you go, well, I still paid a lot of money to see that show. You know, you hope <laughs> that you get there and, you know, at the end of the night you get back to your car and you're like, man, that show kicked ass. Yep. You know, and it's not, it's nice to, uh, you know, after you load your trailer or your, your, your truck, you can hear the fans talking outside or right after the show, you run outside, you know, just to get some you know fresh air and wait for the room to clear out so you can start tearing down and you hear the fans just, you know, that was the best show I've ever seen in my life or, yep. you know, this band just keeps getting better and better and better every time. And knowing that you had a part of that, um, you know, I've always said it, you know, like during the pandemic, I think one of the things that I missed the most was, uh, when, you know, when I go out to do changeover, there's this energy that you get when the support band's backdrop falls down and our backdrop went up mm -hmm. and you could hear the crowd start screaming as you're dropping, putting pedal boards down for your guitar players. And you look up and these people are just, you know, chomping at the bin. You can feel the energy in that room. That's something... You know, you can't get that anywhere else. Um, it's a, it's really a magical feeling. And, uh, you know, that's kind of over the pandemic. I was like, people are always asking, what did I miss the most? And I was like, you know, just that feeling. When, you, when, you, when those lights go down, even right before, you know, the intro is about to roll and the lights go black and you hear that intro track rolling and the whole crowd is just up in arms. You know, it's like, all right, man. You know, that feeling, you, you feel that in your spine, man. You know, like. Yep. And it's just like and knowing that you're a part of that, you know, and the, the band members knowing that you're a part of that. You know, I, I've been, like I said, I've been very fortunate in my career to work with amazing bands and artists that, uh, you know, have never been like, oh, these is, you know, our crew guys, you know what I mean? You know, they've always been, you know, without our crew, we're nothing kind of deal. And, you know, they've always included us like family. Um, you know, and again, I mean, these are guys that are my, some of my best friends, you know I mean? Yep. You know, the, the, the day I get married, I can tell you, I'm going to have a lot of friends at my wedding and a lot of these guys, <laughs> you know, it's going to be organizing who's on tour and who's not kind of deal. Right, so, right. you know, but it's, uh, things like that. I mean, it's just, it's, that, that energy is just something you can't, you can't get that anywhere else. And it's just, uh, it's an honor to be a part of that. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And, and, it, and, you know, like I said, you're, you're a part of an elite group. So that's, that's really amazing. You do amazing work. The, uh, speaking of the pandemic and stuff, I mean, when that hit, I mean, I think Pop Evil just dropped an album or, or just, <laughs> we were about whatever to. it was. Yeah. Yeah. We you were, were about out. to. Yeah. So and, uh, when the, when the pandemic hit, when the pandemic hit, um, so I was slated to do a Canadian run with uh, a band called Santa Sonia, oh, yeah. which is, which is a super group. I mean, I've done some work with them. Um, and, uh, we were slated to do uh, this Canadian run. And, uh, then I was supposed to have a little bit of time off. Um, you know, when, obviously when I'm home and I, I work in my, in my guitar shop and I also play guitar in a cover band. Um, so I knew something was up when, this Canadian run, it was like, well, we're probably not going to do this Canadian run. We'll call you back in a few days. I think it's going to get canceled. Okay. All right. In the back of my mind, I was like, you know, Popula's got this record coming out. We're supposed to hit the road in May. Yeah, it should be cleared up. Later, you know? And, <laughs> yeah. then, and then I had these gigs with my cover band that were booked. And I was like, huh. Well, these are getting kind of post, you know, pushed out. All right. So something, this is something that's definitely Okay. Maybe this is something serious. Okay. Oh, now we're going to stop in the world for, you know, two weeks. All right. We'll see what happens. Now, now then it's, oh, you know, this Canadian tour fully canceled. We don't know we're going to reschedule it. You know, Gates of My Own Band, completely canceled. We don't know we're going to reschedule it. And then, all right, well, now what? And at the time it was, if you know, you know, if you were a touring guy, you didn't, you couldn't collect unemployment yet. Uh, you know, the, the funds and stuff like that, you know, from Live Nation weren't available immediately to you unless you lost income during X time to X time, which made sense. You know, you had guys like on the Kiss crew or wherever. Right. These guys were overseas and we're very lucky they even got back to the United States. Um, so we're like, all right, you know, we still got Pop Evil coming up in May. We'll be all right. And then that tour got canceled. Um, and that's when a lot of insight came in and I was like, wow, you know, the whole world shut down, well, you know, and 
and again, in my mind, I was like, I got into the touring industry because music's never going anywhere. Right. You know, this industry's never, there always will be live music. Who would have thunk? You know, I mean, <laughs> so um, I was like, well, all right. You know, I can't collect unemployment. You know, this, they didn't have that yet. So, well, what am I going to do? You know, fortunately, I had money saved. So I was like, well, I mean, I'll put some blast out on Facebook or whatever, you know, you know, guitar technician available for, you know, drop off and pick up repairs, you know, you know, full COVID policy. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll come, I'll, you can come drop your guitar from my house and I'll, you know, I'll put on my, my, my suit or whatever I have to, to do it and sanitize it and, make, and whatnot. And fortunately, during the pandemic, everyone decided that they were going to write some of the best music in the world at that time which meant their guitars needed to get repaired. <laughs> so the entire pandemic, I was very fortunate to have guitars being brought to me or mailed to me from all over the country and all over the world um, and get set up or repaired and amplifiers and such. So I really got to hone my craft as far as doing, you know, major repairs during the pandemic. Um, when normally I would never have had that time to really sit there and go, Oh, how do I do that? You know, um, what does this capacitor do? You know, why can't I use it this way? What do these arrows mean on it? So, <laughs> you know, I guess I saw so I was very productive with the pandemic. And like I said, I was fortunate enough that uh, I had enough people that trusted me and believed in me that I, you know, did good work that uh, I could stay busy enough. So that's what I did the entire pandemic. And I just, uh, I nerded out. I took everything that I could learn about a guitar or an amplifier i mean i got books all around down here and stuff that i just sat there and read as much as i could studied as much as i could talk to other skilled guitar technicians you know pick their brains on stuff and you know i mean and got to learn how to do stuff from some of these incredible technicians you know well, what would you do kind of thing you know and uh you know put that in my little arsenal of you know, things to, you know, when something comes into my shop or on the road, if something broke and what can I do to fix it? Um, and uh, I was, you know, like I said, I was lucky for that. Um, and then coming out of the pandemic, you know, I brought a lot of that. And it's still, actually, it was when coming out of the pandemic, um, when the pop evil machine fired back up. I mean, because it was just from like all of us, you know, we went from having the, the red light real quick to the green light. When that green light hit, I mean, it was... That was it. I mean, I think it was a matter of we got green lighted and Shelby had me on a plane, I think like a week and a half later. To yep. <laughs> find out. Yep. So, um, and Shelby was very resourceful and uh, lined up a bunch of guitar work for me when I got out to Michigan. So, I mean, I had about three weeks worth of work to do in about two weeks for people out in Michigan for them. And uh, so thank you. Thank you, Shelby, for that. But uh, the, uh, so, but with that, you know, we were, this is where that story that I'm, I'm getting on to about what Go happened on tour. So yeah. with uh, the things that I learned over the pandemic were, you know, again, how to make major structural repairs. Um, and uh, it came into play perfectly. We were doing a show in, I believe, Georgia. And, uh, so, as we all know, Davey is a showman, um, and a great showman at that. So, Davey decided to start doing this thing during, with their brand new hit single, Breathe Again, um, where he does that pretty cool 80s guitar move where he slings his guitar. And, you know, the whole time we were all joking about it on the bus. We're like, you know, one of these days, man, you ever seen all the failed videos out on YouTube? And he's like, come on, guys, or whatever. We're like, I don't know, man. He'd start joking about it at that point. So we're like, man, Dave, you better be careful, man. You're going to manifest something, dude. You know, one of the strap locks is going to give out. He goes, you know what? We're not going to do strap locks. He goes, you know, Joey's got these uh, carabiner hooks on his base, you know, like Van Halen style. So he goes, Tom, now let's throw them in. I went, you sure? He goes, yeah, man. You know, everyone says I'm manifesting all this bad stuff. So let's make sure those things, that, that guitar strap stays on. And I went, all right, man. So we put some carabiner hooks on a strap and a bass uh, on, the, on the guitar. 
and I'd said, I was like, man, you know, like we, let's go, you know, maybe we hold off on doing this, you know, maybe, maybe we'll try a different strap. And he goes, nah, 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 we'll be all right. So later that night, let's fast forward later that night, you know, I bring the guitar up to him. I was like, Hey man, I just want you to check it out. Make sure you know, the strap feels right. You know, you're not used to throwing the guitar like this. That's yeah. I, mean, I want to make sure it's good. Dave grabs a hold of that guitar and slings it over, you know, in the dressing room and looks at me and goes, man, she's ready to fly. All right. Infamous last words. You know, so we're going to keep this in mind. She's ready to fly. Mm-hmm. So now we go out. We're blistering through the set. We get to breathe again. And this part comes up. And, you know, David already kind of done one, one guitar spin there in the song. We're like, all right, cool. We're good. Well, he does the, the big one. And that's a big break in the song. And he does this like karate, kung fu, kick flip guitar spin. And, ah, oh, man, I'll tell you, that, it, it was like a, a, a flash of light went across the stage. I went, oh, you know, I just, my jaw hit the floor. Immediately, I'm like, what, what was that? And Dave comes running off the stage. And he's got this, this like, you know, this look on his face. Like, you know, like when you, you really screw up when you're a kid in front of your friends and your mom catches you. And he just looks at me and goes, man, mom is going to be so mad at us. <laughs> I was like, what? And we're dying laughing. And I'm like, where's the guitar? And I look over and I'm getting ready to grab a backup guitar for him to play so we can finish the song. He's like, nah, I ain't even worried about it. I'm not going back on that stage. Not even worried about it. And we're all looking around and we're like, man, that guitar, the strap, the actual strap broke in half. And not on any point where it was secured to the guitar, it ripped. In half, halfway through. Something you normally would never expect to happen. Right. Now, so this guitar went flying around his shoulder. I mean, and, I mean, Dave works out, so he's got some muscle behind him. That guitar, I mean, I'll tell you, that guitar must have hit the wall doing about 200 miles an hour. I mean, missed Joey by inches, missed Haley's drum set by, you know, about that. Hit the wall about 200 miles an hour, and that neck snapped in half. Oh, God. Uh, you know, headstock and all, um, you know, I'm sure, like I said, if you go, you go on my, my Instagram or whatever, so you I can find a picture. Yeah. I, 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 you, you can do the cutaway to it right here if you want, <laughs> you know, you know, if I, I, post editing, you can put the picture up of that. Um, but to say the least, so Dave made a ton of funny reels on Instagram, uh, you know, with the Sarah McLaughlin song going behind it and me fixing his guitar um, and ended up turning into a hotel room repair. Um, and then because we tour so often, you know, we don't have a lot of days off. So this guitar had to sit pressure clamps, um, you know, on an angle with, uh, you know, being secured up in a certain way. So it would reset the right way. It's lived in my bunk. It's lived in his bunk. It's lived in the back lounge, you know, for a couple of days till the glue <laughs> fully set. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we put it back together and uh, we get to the machine shop and I hand him back the guitar and I'm like, well, so Dave, let's not do that again. You know, I, uh, we've replaced the strap that broke in half. Uh, mind you, you know, I, I my big joke with anytime something like that happens, I'm like sign it, selling the merch. So, <laughs> you know, I'm sure somewhere out there, there's a video on it of YouTube or whatever. Or someone probably bought the guitar strap. You know, this is the guitar strap that almost broke this guitar um but yeah so but it was just the the that that whole thing happened and uh you know dave he'll tell everyone the story to this day it's like you know well tom's a badass you know he we thought this guitar was dead you know neck whole completely broken off and uh well it plays better than it did before you know i'm like you want me to repaint the neck you want me to do it? no man he goes glorious forever chicks dig scars and i was like this guy <laughs> you know yeah. So, but yeah, I mean, so that was one of those, uh, again, something I had learned how to do over the pandemic that I never really thought I'd ever have to use, but sure enough, here we are, you know, yep. here I am on a bus, Oof. you know, with a, uh, a guitar and, uh, pressure clamps in my bunk, you know, drying because, uh, you know, failure happened, but it's little yep. things like that. I mean, so, you know. But yeah, that was one of the skills I learned. But yeah, you know, there's a bunch of funny reels that, you know, if you want to cut away to those during post editing, that'd be really funny to cut to. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Nice. Nice. So let's talk about, um, 
let's talk about some of your hobbies and stuff. So, you know, on the side, when you're not doing the music stuff and you're not doing guitar stuff, what you, what do you, what do you, what do you like? What's your passion? What's your thing? So, when, I mean, aside from, uh, you know, drinking copious amounts of coffee um, and, you know, talking to my friends on, you know, Zoom, um, when I'm home, um, you know, I, uh, I like to hang out with my kids. Um, you know, I'm, uh, it's pretty funny. My son, I bring him home all these shirts from all the bands that I tour with. Um, so he wears these to school. So I have to be very mindful. He's, uh, he's going to be 15. So yep. my, my daughter's, my daughter's 18. So she is a whole other thing for her. Um, but, uh, my son is 15. So his school teachers are actually fans of some of the bands that I work for. Um, you know, and they're like, well, that's pretty cool. You know, your dad, where's your dad right now? Oh, he's in Europe. Oh, that's pretty neat. And my son's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's, he's working with some band over there right now. Like, yep. my, 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 my loser dad, you know, yeah. Oh yeah. So, I mean, you know, they're like, Oh, that's pretty cool. What, you know, what is that? Is that a bad wolf shirt you're wearing? And he's like, yeah, you know, or ginger, you know, so he's got all, all these shirts. It's kind of funny, but, um, you know, so it's just kind of, it's, it's interesting to me that, you know, he's, uh, that, that, that tree only shook, you know I mean? That, that apple didn't fall very fall, put it that way. Uh, <laughs> so, but, uh, yeah, so I'm home. I like to hang out with my kids. Um, the, uh, as far as my hobbies go. So, um, I am kind of nerdy with stuff, as you can tell, you know, at the, uh, I, mean, I, I like to play with things, you know, electrical, um, Clearly, that's why I like to fix guitars and amplifiers, but I'm a collector of things. Um, uh -huh. Let's see here. Uh, let's grab the iPad here. All you right. You can kind of see us in the background there, but, you know, I got, I got some oh, power. Oh, damn, Rangers. dude. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Uh, damn. Let's see. Oh, you know, I don't, I don't mess around. Let's see if we can uh, let's flip this around here. Uh, that's uh, a Kiss magazine. Oh, hell uh, yeah. From, uh, the, the, that's uh, the Kiss comic book from uh, the 70s. So that oh, was yeah. made with their. That was actually made with their blood. So that's, uh, <laughs> that's that, right. Yep. Yeah, that's one. That's one of those. Um, yeah, I have a. I have a very collective personality. So I like to. I like to use things along the lines of that. But uh, you know the. Yeah, I also. Uh, I'm an avid Rubik's cuber. Um, so funny story how I got into Rubik's cubing. Um, as anyone who has seen a Pop Evil video, preferably Breathe Again, knows how much the love of the Rubik's cube goes to the pop evil camp. Um, yep. you know, some camps like to play with yo-yos, other camps like to, uh, do basketball, but we like to Rubik's cube. Um, so I took it upon myself on the last tour. I was like, well, I'll be damned. I'm going to fucking learn how to do this. You know? And, uh, so it became a thing. Uh, Lee showed us kind of how to do it. Lee, Lee is really good with the Rubik's cube. Um, <laughs> really good. I mean, he can do it with his eyes closed kind of deal. So Lee bought me a Rubik's cube and I sat there just kind of would go in my bunk, shut the curtain and put on a, like a YouTube video and kind of tinker with it. Then Dave figured it out. And, uh, you know, I was, I leave my, like a Rubik's cube on my bunk and I walk, walk by and then I'd see it solved. And I'm like, what the fuck? You know, <laughs> and then you hear Dave and you hear Dave laughing or Lee laughing and it's like, all right, you know, Something the entire tour, you know, I like learn step by step by step by step. Um, then I went on the ginger tour and I mean, some of those flights are long flights, you know, flying from uh, Rhode Island to Los Angeles is a pretty far flight. So again, I kind of took out of what I had had up to that point and went, all right, I got a long flight. Let's figure this out. So I did. I also we figured it out. And uh, then uh, when I went out in, what was it, April after I did the Bad Wolves tour, um, I did the one off of Pop Evil in San Antonio and I had a speed cube at this point. So Lee and I sat down, I was like, Lee, you got to check out this Rubik's cube, dude. And he's like, Oh man, look at that. So, you know, he, I'm, I'm, I do it real quick in front of him and he's like, Oh man, you get real fast at that. You know? <laughs> so, you know, but yeah, so definitely I'm a super nerd when it comes to that kind of stuff. That's um, awesome, dude. Yeah. So, yeah, I do that. Um, Let's see here. I do a lot of computer stuff. Um, <laughs> you know, I think I drive my, my family nuts. I, I, I mine Bitcoin in my house. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, yep. Uh, you know, the, uh, which if people don't know how to do that. It's, uh, there are special machines and computers that are built to do that. 
Um, so yeah, I do that. Um, they're very loud. It's like a, you know, luckily the room I'm in right now has got some soundproofing in it. You can't hear the machines running, but yeah. I have uh, several Bitcoin miners running in my house. So nice. You know, the, the, the electric company loves me, but yeah. Oh, so yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, de- definitely a nerd with stuff, you know, on that level. Um, nice. <laughs> so, um, yeah, yeah, I, I like to tinker with stuff like that, though. Which I mean, like I said, some of those machines are pretty, you know, they're computers, so yeah, they all yeah. circuit, circuit circuit boards and whatnot. So that allows me to. Uh, well, I don't want to rip apart an amplifier. I can rip apart a circuit board and figure out how that works, and if it breaks, how to fix it. So, awesome. you know. It's all, That's it's awesome. all good fun, man. It's all good fun. So, yeah, you know, yeah. look at that guitar, guitar technician, power rangers, collector, super nerd, you know, Rubik's cube. You got it. Rubik's cubes. You know, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> That's awesome, man. The, uh, uh, so, so you said you're going out again in a couple weeks to Europe. So yeah, I'm leaving. Let's see here next week. I'm leaving next Friday to go to Europe for 10 days with suicide silence. Yep. Uh, we're doing, uh Hellfest. We're doing Grass yeah. Pop, uh Full Force. They got some uh some side headline dates that they're doing. Um so that should be really fun. I mean those dudes are coming back full swing and doing a bunch of stuff. I think they just announced an arena tour uh later this year. Um with I think uh Lamb of God and Kill Switch Engage. I think those guys are going oh, yeah. So there's a bun- bunch bunch yeah. of big stuff going on for those guys this year. Um, which I could be happier for. I mean, those guys are amazing human beings and great friends of mine. Um, so happy to help them out on this tour that they, that they are coming out with over to Europe. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I got some time off. It looks like some, there's some, uh, massive fall, you know, late spring, late summer, fall dates with festivals and whatnot for in this moment. Um, you know, and then hopefully towards the end of the year, maybe some, we'll get ginger back to the United States and, I'll be back with them for some of those dates. So that's kind of what we're looking like right now. Um, You know, we'll kind of see, you know, I know in this moment it's going to, you know, will keep me pretty busy. So I said, we're doing, it looks like we're doing all the major festivals this year. So nice. Wow. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And and I I know a lot of bands haven't even announced their fall tours yet or anything like that. Yeah. 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 There's some stuff, you know, coming up under the rug, you know, which will be announced, you know, sooner than later. Um, yeah, like I said, I mean, I'm pretty excited to do one of my big bucket list venues with, uh, you know, some great friends. So I'm pretty excited about that. I've never gotten to do a show at Red Rocks. So right. I'm pretty yeah. excited yeah. to be able to do that. That's, uh, you know, for all, you know, all these years I've been on the road, I've never gotten to do a show at Red Rocks or go to a show at Red Rocks. So, you know, and doing a show at Red Rocks. within this moment? Yeah, it's within this moment. Yep. They, they yeah, announced cool. that uh, last week or the week before. So, yep. Awesome. You know, we've been able to do a show on, and they're headlining, I believe, as well. So, be able to do a show on that level with the, uh, a band like that and such great people, you know, such a positive people to be around as well is kind of, uh, for me, it's going to be great to have that experience. So, I'm very excited for that. What do you, what do you like to do on your days off when you're on the road? <laughs> so, my days off are, I, I'm, a, I'm an old man. In case, you know, there's always these stories about Guitar Tech Tom that float around. Um, they're probably all true. Um, so I am, I am, uh, the old man on the bus. Um, I'm, uh, I'm the guy, I'm the first one to sleep usually. Um, you know, if you ever get a chance to interview Ross Landis from, uh, nothing more, he can tell you some really funny stories about how I'm, how much of an old man I am. Uh, <laughs> okay. any, any of these guys, any of these guys will tell you, you know, they're, uh, they're like, oh man, it's 1130 at night, Tom, huh? Jesus, past your bedtime, you know, man, <laughs> you know. So, but I'm also one of the first people awake on the bus. So, um, on a day off, my typical day off, you know, I'll, I'll, maybe I'll sleep in. Maybe it'll be like nine o'clock in the morning and I get out of my bunk. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. But, uh, days off, I usually like to spend, you know, I'll, I'll do my laundry. Um, you know, maybe go to a Walmart kind of deal. If I can, if the hotel maybe has a, a hot tub in it, kind of do that. Um, other than that, I mean, a lot of it's, you know, I'll try to find something, you know, a couple of the crew guys or whatever, and, you know, if, uh, we're allowed to, you know, you know, if places are around or whatever, you know, kind of go to the mall, hang out, maybe go shoot some pool, stuff like that. You know, um, and a lot of it's just kind of spent, you know, in a hotel basically, you know, right. Doing, doing laundry and, you know, I mean, to some of these, 
and uh, people always man being on tour must be crazy what are you doing i'm like folding my fucking laundry what are you doing but you know <laughs> like <laughs> but uh yeah you know i mean that's kind of that's, that's usually my days off are spent doing that you know i try to uh you know facetime home stuff like that talk to my kids um yeah i mean average day off i mean it's kind of you know my, my saturdays are a lot different than someone else's so um yeah no, nothing nice. special, man. I mean, like I said my days are pretty chill, you know. I, you know, yep. I'm, I'm a uh, some guys when they go on tour. Uh, Justin, the drum tech from Pop Evil, um, he was a taco guy. So, it, and when he goes on tour, Justin likes to find where the greatest tacos are. Yep. Me, when I go on tour, I'm the burger guy. I, yeah, you know, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I'm like, oh man, I can tell you where the, the best burger from, you know, Boston to San Francisco is. Um, so that's what I try to do. You know, if I get off the bus and finish folding my laundry and have enough time in the day, you know, I'll ask a local, Hey, what's the best burger in town? You know, you, you know, you don't ask the people in the front lobby of the hotel right. or whatever. Yeah. yeah. You, you go to Walmart and find, you know, you know, grandfather Dan or whatever and say, Hey man, I got a question for you. Best burger in the radius. What do you got? And that guy probably knows the answer. Oh, so yeah, that's, absolutely. that's usually what I do on my days off. <laughs> nice, nice. Well, man, I can't, I can't thank you enough for coming on. I've actually been wanting to do this for a long time, and you know, finally we have kind of synced up on it. Oh, I know uh, it's I'm, crazy, man. I mean, this has been what, like two years in the making now, and then yeah, you know, my tour schedule finally lines up. And I got a couple of weeks off, so yeah, yeah, and you know, getting to hang out with you guys at the show recently and all this stuff. So it's really cool. I'm hoping you guys get to my venue. I don't know if you know, I, I work for the Bank of New Hampshire Pavilion. I think oh, probably all last. Right. Yep. I think last time you were there was probably with Poison when you guys pop evil. Oh man, yeah, Poison, yeah, maybe? way back when, yeah. Yeah, yeah. maybe way I don't know for you. I don't know. I don't think maybe you've been there. I, Anyways, yeah. So hopefully you get to back to my venue at some point. Yeah, too. yeah. Hopefully we get uh, back there. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, dude, it's awesome that you did this. So thank you, thank you so much. Hey man, no, it's it's been a blast, man. I guess I know we've been trying to figure this out for a while. And, yeah. You know, finally, my I got a break in my tour schedule, and uh, you know. I mean, so, it's, been, it's, been, it's been a wild few months, I'll tell you what. <laughs> you know? Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so where do people find you uh, on socials? Are you, you know, do you like giving out your socials at all? Anybody so, want to learn uh, about your cover band, anything? All social media is at Guitar Tech Tom. Also, I probably made it pretty easy for everyone to do that. Uh, so, yep, yeah, you can do that. You can shoot me a message, and I usually respond, and I have guitar picks that I give to people and stuff like that, as we all know. Um, but, yeah, so that's that. Um, let's see here. The cover band is uh, Squelch Rocks, at Squelch Rocks, across all social media. Um, we'll actually be up your way um, later in when July. Okay. Uh, we'll be, we're going we're gonna to be up in Maine doing, uh, let's see here, what is it? Uh, we do we do the Sunday River every year up in Maine. Uh, oh, yeah. We are the we we do New Year's every year up there. I think we are going to be up your way. Uh, we're going to be at, well, actually not your way. You're closer to Portland, but we'll be at uh, Mount Abram uh, yeah. doing uh, doing that in the uh, middle of July. Uh, I guess they have all the the big mountain biking stuff like that. So we're going to be up there that weekend, and which is a first for us. We've never actually gotten to play a ski resort in the summertime and i guess that area of maine is just as busy in the summer as it is in the winter with so we're pretty excited about that we're one of the first bands that has actually gotten to do that so yeah we're pretty excited about that yeah Yeah, i I have never i've never been up to that part of the state that time of the year so i'm pretty excited about it so (laughs) well if i'm not booked i'll do my best to try to get there i I, uh, come hang out come hang out man you know if you're if you're around you're around New Year's Eve, you know, you want to have a real good time, you know, we'll be at the, up at the Matterhorn Ski Bar up at Sunday Do River. some photos for you. Yeah. yeah, you know, yeah, you know, come hang out with us, have a good time, you know, I yeah, mean. Definitely. We, we bring in a big production up there, so. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome, dude. That's awesome. Um, do you, are you, uh, for people, are you open for guitar work for anybody or is that just strictly I am, uh, national I, I, arts? I am. I am. I am open for guitar work. Um so um i the i do have a facebook page i believe it's it's uh gtt guitars and amplifiers the name of my business uh you can facebook that um the i think if you just do at gtt guitars um it'll it'll pop up in a quick search with that you know obviously guitar tech guitar tech tom gtt yep 
Yep. So, <laughs> nice, um, nice. Yeah, so, yeah, um, people can send me a message on there. I, uh, I do accept repair work from people, you know, mail-ins and everything else too. So I have people as far away as Japan sending me guitars to repair. So nice. You know, as, as long as they're willing to wait, if I'm available and I'm home and I get it in in time and back out, then I do. If they're willing to work around my tour schedule, I've had guys, you know, ship me guitars to venues, you know, to do a setup and I spin them right back around and have them, you know, <laughs> wow. I've done that. So, you know, nice. you know I mean, you know, everything like that. So I, like I said, I enjoy what I do and, um, you know, talk to anybody that wants to listen about, you know, guitars. So, you know, nice. I don't, nice. I don't mind talking to someone's ear off about how to set up a guitar. So. <laughs> now, 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 someone told me once upon a time, knowledge is power. So, absolutely, yeah, and having the skills behind it, absolutely. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, so I, I don't mind. Sh- I don't mind sharing sharing the knowledge of people. I love it actually. So nice, nice. Well, thank you so much for doing this, man. I really appreciate uh, thank, it. Uh, thank you for having me. It's been, I've had a blast during having coffee time with you. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Hey, thanks for watching this episode with Tom Reardon. We hope you enjoyed it. You can check out our other guests on our other episodes at all your favorite podcast locations on YouTube. Search for Tales from the Pit podcast and at talesfromthepit.net. We'll see you next time.